Ravens Rundown coming up in just a few moments from right now. But before we do, we have these mailbags here on the Rundown. And you may be asking yourself, how do I participate? How can I be a part of a mailbag? Well, it's for subscribers only. So whether you go to our community tab and put your questions there or even in the comments section, if you use the hashtag Ravens on our pinned comments then you're going to be on the next show. So get your questions in. Use that hashtag Ravens so you can be a part of the mailbag show here on the Ravens Rundown. You have questions. I have answers. We've come to the right place. It's the Ravens Rundown. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us for today's show, powered by Chet Sports and A lot of questions and not a lot of time to get to all of them, but we'll do what we can to answer today's questions. And our first one comes from Nick D. He wants to know, do you think the Ravens would benefit from a wide receiver with some big height, 6'4", plus for those crucial fourth down plays and fades? Nick, um, I think every team in the league would benefit from a 6'4 receiver for fourth down plays and fades. If there was only a free agent receiver that matched the description you're talking about, hmm, trying to put my my finger to it. Who is it? Oh, Julio Jones. Yeah, that's exactly what you're talking about. Now, not quite 6'4". He's 6'3". But nonetheless, Julio Jones is available. I think at this point in time in free agency, Julio Jones is not going to have a high price tag. I understand that the Ravens don't have a whole lot of cash to spend necessarily, but at this point in the ball game, in this juncture, it does you no harm to bring in Julio Jones because if you look at this Ravens receiving core, it is not a very experienced group, right? We've talked about that all offseason long. And if you bring Julio Jones in, that's just another body. That's only going to help those guys there. And I think the one concern that most people have with Julio Jones is is his health. Okay, well, if Julio goes down, then you go back to where you started at. So that's why I look at this with Julio Jones is it doesn't hurt you at all to give Julio Jones a look. I would love to see him be a part of this Baltimore Ravens team, be your number two or three receiver potentially for this Ravens offense. Now, do you want the Ravens to sign Julio Jones? What say you? If you want to see it done, if you want to see him in Baltimore, type J.J., That's all you got to do. Type JJ. And if we get enough comments, I've been told that management will sign Julio Jones immediately. So go ahead and do that, and we'll see what we can get done. Next question comes from Slick Rick. What happened to UDFA free agent Devin Williams? Heard he didn't report. Uh, Rick, that is exactly what happened. Devin Williams did not report to training camp. And... If you look back at Devin Williams, his numbers weren't great at Oregon. He caught 35 passes last year, 557 yards, and four touchdowns. But I think the Ravens were looking at this when it came to potential. We talked about size earlier. Size matters. 6'5", 210, right? I mean, this is a, a big guy. And so I think the Ravens were willing to give him a shot. Not sure if... You know, we would ever see him play, but the Ravens were willing to give him a chance, and ultimately he's not there. So when we get more information about what happened, what exactly has gone on, why he wasn't there, we'll let you know. But my guess would be, if I were to take an educated guess, that he felt like that he wasn't going to make the team, and so he just decided not to show up altogether. Now, it's it's upsetting because it was intriguing. You were – I think all of us were interested, okay, what could the Ravens potentially do with a 6'5 receiver? Even though his numbers necessarily weren't earth-shattering at Oregon, it was something that caught the eye of a 6'5'10 receiver. Those guys don't walk in the building every day. So we'll see. When we get updates, we'll let you know. But it's a very bizarre situation to say the least. Here on Ravens Rundown, we're covering this team each and every day throughout training camp and All the way through football season, we'll have all the ins and outs of what's going on in this team as they are getting ready for the season ahead, whether it's news, rumors, trades, free agency, and more, and everything in between. You know we're going to be all over it here on Ravens Rundown. Subscribe now, youtube.com slash Ravens TV, 
and turn on the notifications. Be the first to know what's going on and get our breakdowns, our analysis of what's happening here at Chat Sports with your Baltimore Ravens. That's youtube.com slash Ravens TV. Next question comes from Adam78. Adam78 wants to know, there is no chance at a Metcalf trade because he would cost a first and second rounder. In the history of the Baltimore Ravens organization, they have never given up a first round pick in a trade. Hashtag Ravens. Now, that may be true, but the Ravens have never had the chance to trade for a guy like DK Metcalf. Now, the Seahawks, I think, have every intention of keeping DK Metcalf in getting a deal done. But here we are now. DK already missed minicamp. There's still no deal in place. Eventually, push comes to shove where the Seahawks have to make a decision of getting a deal, giving DK what he wants, or trading him one way or the other. I mean, look at the numbers of DK Metcalf. The last three years, he's been fantastic. Great rookie season, 900 yards, seven touchdowns. 2020, 1,300 yards. That was a career high with 10 touchdowns. And then last year, he had a career high in touchdowns, 12 touchdown grabs, 967 yards. So he's been great, and I don't think that we've seen his best football yet. And Lamar Jackson needs all the help he can get, especially getting the football down the field. Um, If they have an opportunity to get DK Metcalf, they better do so. I don't know if that opportunity is there, but if it is, I mean, think about this. The Ravens traded for Anquan Bolden, and that propelled them to competing for a Super Bowl. They were aggressive. They made the move for the former Arizona Cardinals receiver, and it paid off. And here we are, you know, I think sometimes we have short-term memory, right? You know, we, we forget about things. And, you know, we're quick to dismiss the things that, that got you there in the past. And here's a case where Anquan Bolden, with if you take him away from that Ravens team, there's no way that they're even getting to the conference championship game that year. He was vital for the Ravens. So with that said, uh, you know, th- this t- to me, that's pretty comparable. He is that type of difference maker, can make that impact on uh, your team, DK Metcalf is. Would you trade in a first and a second for DK Metcalf? I sure as hell would. That's an easy call. Personally, I know you have to pay him, but DK Metcalfs aren't walking through the building every day. What say you? Let me ask you in the comment section. Type T for trade, type P for pass. If you would trade a first and second round pick for DK Metcalf, let me know. T for trade, P for pass. Got a great deal that we're offering just for viewers of the Ravens Rundown. It is a hat and T-shirt deal. says Charm City Football. And I got to tell you, that looks pretty snazzy right now. Uh, look, it's hot outside. You got to be wearing some T-shirts. You need the ball cap, all of that in between. And it'll be looking good still when football when football season starts, the regular season. And here's the thing. It's on sale right now, okay? Supplies, look, we got a supply chain crisis in this country. And so who knows when the how long these things are going to be available for. So go ahead and get yours now. T-shirt and hat combination for $23.99. That's it. Chatsports.com slash Ravens combo to get yours today. That's chatsports.com slash Ravens combo. Next question comes from Freaky Day. Freaky Day wants to know, with the hashtag Ravens, if Ronnie Stanley's injury lingers, could we possibly trade for Andre Dillard? Hmm, that's interesting. Now, here's what the Ravens, from what we've been told, the recent reports, that with the injury of Ronnie Stanley, they've told Jawan James to be ready to go week one to start in place of Stanley at that left tackle spot. And what's fascinating about that is that Jawan James – We have not seen him play a game since 2019. So, with that said, I would think, you look at the Ravens' depth chart here, obviously there's some concerns. There's a lack of depth there. Um, But I think anything's on the table as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if, you know, the, the Ravens do a deal for a guy like Andre Dillard, for example, before the season begins. I think that they're going to try to assess where, Ronnie Stanley's at, if they feel like he's going to be out for a while, if that's the type of evaluation they get, then yeah, certainly they could go ahead and make a move. But I have a feeling this is going to be kind of a week-by-week thing. If Stanley, let's say, just for an example, if they feel like they can get him back by week four, then no, you don't make a move for Andre Dillard. If you don't think you're getting Stanley back till 
you know, late into the year, then I think we start to see uh, possible trade options for the Ravens there when it comes to that offensive line. Before we go, what's your panic meter on Ronnie Stanley? I'm very curious. How do you guys feel about this situation right now? If you had to put a number on it, 1 through 100, scale it for me now in the comments section. Let me know where your panic mode is when it comes to Ronnie Stanley. Appreciate you joining us here on the Ravens Rundown. As always, give me a follow on Twitter at Tyler Jones Live, and we'll see you next time here on Ravens Rundown.